Hello and welcome to The Journey, WCTV's only faith-based show. I'm your host, Andrew Ria. On today's episode, our producer Dylan Cleland talks with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Adam Morgani joins me for our panel segment, and we close with a word of encouragement. Get comfortable. It's time for The Journey on WCTV. We're going to fade up to uh, camera three and five, four, three, two, one, take it. Our producer, Dylan Cleland, spoke with Waynesburg University members of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes to talk about how their faith plays a role in their athletics. Typically, you wouldn't find a basketball, soccer ball, or any other type of athletic equipment inside of a chapel. But tonight's different. It's a Monday night, and that means Fellowship of Christian Athletes is meeting to discuss two of their passions, sports and faith. Meeting each Monday night at 9, FCA members gather to break down the impact of faith on their lives. With the recent COVID-19 pandemic, many of these athletes have looked to God and their faith to help them through these trying times. And being a senior, it was kind of frustrating because we were ready to be get back into it for the fall, but um, it's been um, it's kind of an inspiring way to um, uh, grow as just an athlete, but um, kind of reach out to the freshman um, players because they have a whole different situation. These last eight months, as everybody knows, has been crazy. Um, and, uh, but I think it's been a really good time uh, for me personally, just getting a break from the, the typical schedule um, of sports. You know, that's kind of dominated my life the last uh, really 18, 19, 20 years. Um, and so to be able to just kind of have a, a change in pace and change in, um, you know, just having that time to relax and, um, really focus on other things that I haven't been able to really focus on um, too much before uh, has been a really nice change. After spending three years learning about Christ in sports, people like Maddie, Steven, and Jared are now a part of the leadership team at FCA. As a leader, I um, just try to like organize as a one uh, with the team. Uh, I have a like leadership team here with Steven and Maddie and also Kylie and a few other uh, athletes in Waynesburg. I, I don't, I just like sharing the gospel. Uh, I just like doing lecture for, FC has a different topics for each year. And I kind of like, you know, give them, hey, like let's serve 100% and do, let's like sacrifice and then let's bring it as a team. That's all I do. <laughs> I mean, uh, I do the learning for, you know, running a little bit of a social media as well. Ever since freshman year, we kind of rebuilt the leadership team um, for FCA. So we've been kind of there since, the end of freshman year, so three years in the leadership team. FCA Waynesburg has created quite a unique bond around campus between the school's different teams and athletes. Uh, with so many of these athletes, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, so many of their seasons getting cut um, or you know shifted to the spring, um, it's a lot of uncertainty and I think it's important to be able to come together um, as we've been doing, uh, even if it's you know socially distanced, trying to do that to the best of our abilities. Um, and yeah, really just lean on each other uh, because you know we're all athletes. We're all missing out on uh, you know seasons, practices, games. Uh, we're all trying to do the best we can. Uh, but I think it's really important that we are able to come and do things, uh, play little games, or um, just kind of dive into the Word and see um, you know just kind of the power Christ has. And um, you know, as I said, He's He's had it planned out, and so just trying to find comfort in that and reassuring each other and kind of comforting each other along the way. Uh, kind of diversity that you don't get um, normally on campus because we're all kind of in our little pods from people we know at classes or people we, we are on teams with. So um, this is a great way for athletes to come together and um, dig into their faith a little bit more um, relating to the competitive side. Just the community that affects like we are the family. Uh, like just playing sports could be very competitive with each other. But outside of the field, we are definitely friends, uh, family, and then we are one of a big community. But inside of, on the field, 
we're definitely like friends and family but still we want to like hey like let's get better let's play better together as a family aspect uh it, it could be even different team we are hey good job like you played really well like last week and la yesterday there's just an like, encouragement like you can do it in a like outside of you know different outside of field and also different like you know sports that even football team can say oh yeah you guys did an awesome job that, that aspect their family and then build one team even different team it's something to um all to come together for a focus um instead of just competing against each other i like to say um being competitors for christ so um finding ways to um focus on him um not just through our um, athletics but um kind of incorporating it and in while we're like doing our work off the field whether it's in the gym or the chapel fellowship of christian athletes is always welcoming new members for WCTV, I'm Dylan Cleland. Thank you, Dylan. When we come back on the journey, Adam Morganti will join me to discuss Pope Francis's comments regarding same-sex couples. Stay tuned, you're watching The Journey. Welcome back to The Journey. In a recently released documentary in Rome, Pope Francis made a statement on same-sex couples. In the documentary, the Pope says, homosexual people have the right to be in a family. They are children of God and have a right to a family. Nobody should be thrown out or made miserable over it. What we have to do, or what we have to have, is civil union law. That way they are legally covered. I support that. However, the Pope said in the past that support of civil liberties for homosexuals does not represent a theological support for homosexual acts. So Adam, what are your thoughts on the Pope's comments and their impact on the Catholic faith? I think these are very powerful comments and obviously comments that kind of contradict what the Catholic faith is all about, but I also think they're the right comments as well because you see in America and all 50 states in the United States same-sex marriage is legal, so I think it's great that Pope Francis is acknowledging that this is more of a trend that, that we as a nation are going towards is same-sex marriage and homosexual people, and we're seeing more and more of that. Back in the day, if you saw a same-sex couple, a lot of people would think that was very wrong, but I think now, in today's day and age, a lot more people are accepting of it, and I think it's also important for the for Pope Francis in the church to accept that as a new way of life, and that's really how we are adopt, adopting as a as a society that's becoming a new normal compared to it was back in before the two thousands. Let's say, yeah, I agree with that, and I think that the Pope's comments come from a unique position because the Pope isn't just another leader of the church; he is the Pope, the leader of the Catholic Church. That makes him a public figure, and a lot of times you see the Pope commenting on public issues. Um, and him saying that, you know, homosexuals deserve the same equal treatment as everyone else under the law is very true. It's something that, you know, goes back in the roots of American ideology, back further, even past the Constitution, to John Locke. Uh, John Locke had a great impact on, you know, the, the foundation of our country and this idea that government should be, is created to protect life, liberty, and property of all people. Now, us as a country, we have not done a good job of doing that in our history. But I think that, you know, there's a big movement for that, for that equal treatment under the law, finally, for so many people. And, you know, the Pope's comments lean towards that. And he does a very good job here of differentiating between, you know, his belief of how 
homosexual people should be treated in public as opposed to the church's beliefs and, and still maintaining those, you know, those Catholic values. And so I think that this is, this is very good. This is a good move on the Pope's part. And I think that, you know, it, it's something that more people should be talking about. We should be able to separate church and state. And a lot of people talk about that, separating the, the church from the state. But also we need to work on separating the state from the church. And I think this is a good step in both directions. So I want to talk to you. Um, how do you feel personally about this, you know, as, as a faithful person? How, how did these comments sort of make you feel? They made me feel really good as, I, yes, I am Catholic, but I have been for same-sex marriage ever since it became really a hot topic. And r really, back when we were younger, Drew, you didn't really hear that up in the news. But recently, when states started legalized same-sex marriage, and just the thought of it, I thought, there's no problem with it. If, you, if you're a man and you love a man, if you're a woman and if you love another woman, that's fine. You do you. So I, I like the comments about it personally. I agree with what Pope, Pope Francis said. And back in 2013, I was reading an article about some of the things he said about same-sex marriage. He basically said, I'm not going to be the one to judge. So he personally has, has come out in, in that article saying, I'm not for it. I'm not against it. Basically, you do you, which that's really the approach that, you, that we have to come by where if you come across someone that's homosexual, you can't judge them for what they believe in. I think everyone and God, I think, w would want us to do this too, wants us to accept everyone no matter what their beliefs are and no matter what they decide to do, whether they are homosexual or straight. Now, some people would say that maybe this is too far. This is the church, you know, outstepping their bounds or maybe going too far against the original ideology of what they believe. What would you say to someone who believes that? I would say that, like I said in the first answer, that times are changing and things in the church, yes, they are very traditional in what they believe in, but times are changing and same-sex marriage is becoming more acceptable than it was, let's say, in the 70s or 80s. So I would say just accept everyone for who they are. And even though it's not what it, what it used to be like, it, it is what, what it is now. So accept the people for what they are and what they believe in, and even the church. And it's a good thing that the church is also going, to that, going towards that trend as well. Yeah, I agree. And I want to go back to something that he said in that comment, this, this idea that, you know, we're all children of God. How do you think that plays into not only, you know, treating in public, treating other people as your equal, as literally like either your brother or your sister, how do you think that plays into just in general, not only treating them equally, but also personally as someone of faith, you know, how you treat them personally? Yes. Yeah, so, well, you were taught that golden rule in elementary school, treat others the way you want to be treated. So if you believe in something different that someone does, you wouldn't want to have that person disrespect you for ha doing something you believe in and vice versa. You certainly don't shouldn't pick on someone for something they believe in or something that they practice. So I think that's important important as being a child of God and people of faith in that statement on as treat others the way they want to be treated and no matter what they believe in in that everyone should be treated equally. Well thank you Adam for joining us when we come back we'll have a message about the upcoming 2020 presidential election. Stay tuned you're watching the journey. It's a Saturday night. You know what that means. Time to party. Sam is having a good time, watching sports, drinking beer, playing Pong, not a care in the world for Sam. Nobody at the party stops Sam. They let him walk out the door with his keys, even though he was stumbling, having a hard time to stand up. What happened less than 10 minutes later would change Sam's life forever. Welcome back to The Journey. With the 2020 presidential election quickly approaching, we at The Journey wanted to put out you know, a message of encouragement and peace 
as we enter these you know, troubling times for a lot of people. There's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser. So, Adam, I'm going to ask you this. What do you hope to see from the country leading into the election as it quickly approaches? Well, leading into the election, you're, we're already seeing these numbers, Drew. It seems like there's a lot more people voting and better voter turnout than there was four years ago. And now er, early on, with there's a mail-in option and then absentee ballot. And a, there's a lot, many more options to vote. And you're seeing the numbers that more people have voted already, more people are getting out to vote. And they're going to smash how how many people voted four years ago. Well, they might hit a record for that, which is that's a good sign for the country for sure. Leading into the election, seeing more people interested, more people wanting to vote. Now, it also seems like in previous elections that I've lived for, this is the the most stress they've put on us as a country to register to vote. Like I can't tell you how many times I've watched TV and I've seen so many commercials saying, hey, go vote, make sure you register to vote. And they are really stressing this. And it might be because there's a current pandemic going on. That is probably the main reason. But I really do like how they are stressing to us as citizens to make sure you register to vote and make sure to vote because really it's important and it's really your, your, your civic duty to vote as an American citizen. Yeah, I agree with that. And naturally, in a contested election, like this year when there's so many important issues on the line, there's going to be tension. There's going to be, you know, resentment and anger. How do we as people of faith, you know, put that aside, try to keep things positive and, you know, support our preferred candidate in a way that, you know, shines light on the good rather than, you know, casting bad on others? Yeah, I mean, I think it's very important to if you don't agree with someone politically to listen to their argument and you don't have to agree with them after you you debate something political but you just have to respect and honor their opinion because that is most important because there could be between republicans and democrats screaming matches over a certain issue you don't want that and you saw four you saw four years ago when Donald Trump won the election, for weeks there was a bunch of protests going on saying, people were saying we reject the president-elect. Now, yes, you're allowed to protest, but I didn't really see any point in doing that for protesting the results of the election. Now, I think no matter who wins this election, you're going to see something like that, maybe even worse. But it's honestly unfortunate that as a country that if their person doesn't win, they're going to go to that level and protest the results of the election where I'm thinking, listen, it's, it's, the, it's not going to change the results of the election by if you protest or not. So why go ahead and do it? It just doesn't make any sense to me. So the most important thing is just agree to disagree. You don't have to agree with everything someone says. And liberals and conservatives... They're going to disagree on stuff. It's just important that they don't get into heated arguments and they respect each other's opinion. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of importance that I think is missed on local elections. In a a year from now, there's another election. It's not a presidential election, but it's another election. It's a local election. And those have so much more impact on you personally. So I think that that's part of it, too, is we need to put more of a focus on these local elections and getting involved with them and really paying attention. No, you're not going to see them on Fox News or CNN, but these are very important elections to pay attention to, get to know the candidates. Depending on where you live, you might know someone who's running, which is great. And so, you know, we need to keep looking at the long term. How important do you think it is for people to, after this election, come together, come together as one united America and look towards the future. If you win, then, you know, hopefully keep advocating for those policies that you hope to see put in place. And if you lose, the same thing. Focus on those local elections and try to make a real impactful change that way. How important is it that we unite after this? Yeah, it's extremely important. For example, if your candidate doesn't win, in this election, whether it be presidential candidate or local candidate, you give that candidate a chance to not root for whoever wins that you don't want to to do bad. And that 
right there just doesn't make our country united at all is rooting against our president if if you don't like him or not you have to give whoever's whoever wins the presidential election donald trump or joe biden if you don't like either of them and they win you have to give them a chance you have to respect what they're trying to do even though you don't have don't agree with it so that's the problem right off the bat is people who dislike donald trump or people that dislike joe biden if they don't get who they want they're gonna go ahead immediately root for failure for whatever they do but for whoever wins this presidential election the other side they just have to accept it pretty much and it might be hard but they have to give the other person a chance and hope that they do well because if we have good leadership in this country it can make our country more united in that way i agree and i think that the best thing that we can do personally in our lives is to a be involved and be informed B, go out and vote on November 3rd or vote early, whether it be absentee or early voting. And C, you know, try to keep it respectful. Regardless of what happens or what is said, try to keep it respectful. Focus on that future. Focus on what you can do moving forward to, you know, promote peace and togetherness in this country. And finally, we just have to pray. Keep praying for our leaders, regardless of who wins pray for our leaders moving forward and pray for this country because our country faces a lot of issues moving forward and we're not going to help ourselves if we're against each other. When we come back, I will share the word of encouragement right here on The Journey. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Pretty much good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against a wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. Welcome back to The Journey on WCTV. It is now time for our word of encouragement. For our last episode, we as panelists were asked our favorite verse of scripture to promote the episode on WCTV's social media. My favorite verse has always been Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. A while back, my grandmother got me this plaque of the verse, and I've brought it with me each semester to school as a reminder. I believe this verse is as applicable today as it has ever been, specifically for college students like us. There's so much uncertainty in a world plagued by COVID-19, tension, and fear. As college students, we come to Waynesburg University to sharpen our skills in our selected fields and grow as adults, ready to incorporate faith, learning, and serving into our occupations after graduation. However, our great uncertainty has risen. The workplace we thought we would be entering after graduation has shifted drastically. For seniors like me, that change has altered plans to our future in ways we did not imagine just a year ago. However, Jeremiah 29 11 reminds us that our plans are not always correct. It's ultimately God's plan that we follow. While that may seem scary for us, not knowing what lies ahead, Jeremiah 29 11 tells us that God's plan is not one to fear. Wherever we go, we will have a future of hope and prosperity if we walk with him. While the future may be uncertain, remembering the words of Jeremiah 29 11 gives us hope and freedom from the idea that we have to have everything figured out. We want to thank you for tuning into this episode of The Journey. Stay tuned all semester long as we bring you faith-based content on WCTV. For Dylan Cleland, Adam Morganti, and the rest of the Journey crew, 
I'm Andrew Rhea saying good night and God bless. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.